Hello everybody, welcome to webisode number three in our home studio recording series. In part one, we looked at recording a full band using Pro Tools 8 and the M-Audio ProFire Light Bridge to get a bunch of inputs all at once into Pro Tools. In part two, we looked at overdubbing using the Project Mix I.O., doing some MIDI overdubbing and some instrument and vocal overdubbing. Now in part three, we're going to put all that together and try to create a good mix. So basically, I'm going to let you look over my shoulder as I solo the different parts and look for a good level of compression, a good level of EQ, and then try to put it all together and, uh, and make a good sounding mix. Okay, let me just take you very quickly through what I do. I've marked a region that encompasses the entire song that we're looking at here. And so I've just started it playing. I hear the acoustic guitar now prominently. So I've soloed that channel. <laughs> and then there's a little mistake we'll have to cut out later. I'm going to insert onto it one of Pro Tools EQs, the EQ7 band. Never know how many bands you'll need, so why not be safe and just use that one from the start. So that's what I like to do. I like to get them really loud and really narrow. Find the ones I like and the ones I don't like. I don't have a particular preference about always doing EQ subtractively, although curves that are created subtractively tend to sound better than ones where you add a bunch. Add, 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 add. We'll take that solo off. And the next thing we hear sticking out is the vocal. Let's go ahead and solo that. For this one, I'm just going to demonstrate the uh, the compression just under dynamics. We'll go to compressor limiter. Right there you can see that it's showing you how much it's compress compressing. Anytime it goes into the red, it's compressing, and of course you see it down there. That actually, that default pretty well fits my model for what the vocal compression should look like. So we'll just close that out and maybe add in some reverb. So we'll add a second insert with reverb. And uh, by default, it goes to 100% mix. Of course, we don't want that, as you can hear. But that does allow us to hear what the reverb sounds like. I find a nice large plate works pretty well sometimes. So I just mix that in just right. Take off the solo. Okay, so we've looked at a very quick way to add some EQ dynamics and reverb on the inserts of some channels. That's a quick way to get your track sounding really good. You could go about it the long way and create buses and aux sends and a whole bunch of other things, but uh, for today's basic lesson, this is just a quick way to get your track sounding good. The next part is to mix them all together in an ear-pleasing way. I'm going to hold down the Option key, go to the Automation section, and choose Right. By holding down Option, it armed all the tracks to write what we do on the faders. Now, it's a lot easier to move real faders many at a time instead of just one at a time with a mouse on the screen. So for this part of our evening, we're going to come over here to the Project Mix I.O. Now, if you select with your bank keys, you're going to see different faders controlling different tracks. Right now, we've got audience mics, kick, snare, and so on through the bass keys. If we move the bank over, you've got the electric guitar, acoustic guitar, vocals, the instruments we added, and the master fader. So we're going to go ahead and hit play. It's recording what we do now. So I'm going to pull the vocal all the way down. I'm going to pull the audience mics down because Bill makes a little bit of a mistake in the guitar part right here. And you wouldn't even know it unless he had said oops in the mic right there. So we're just going to edit out him saying oops. And then when it's time to sing, we're just going to pull him back up. Right here, bring it nice and high. I am full of earth. You okay, are bring back in some audience mics real gently. I am stained by dirt from too depravity. Like the, the Wurlitzer coming from the X8. It's in the keys track right here. I'm going to double check this in my headphones just to make sure I'm hearing everything. Earth, the 
I really like that part of this part of the song too. He does that guitar part so well, and the keys just <laughs> not to brag on myself, but I just love that Wurlitzer sound. It's one of my favorites. If we go back to the computer monitor, you can see our automation lane has changed to latch for each of those, which basically means it's recorded what we've done and it's going to play it back. If we hit play again, you're going to see the faders pop into space and start moving. But if we grab a fader, it's going to start rewriting the automation. That's what latch means. And the coolest thing is they not only move on the screen, but over here too. Let's go to that vocal channel right there and watch it move. So get ready for the vocal to come in. Comes right up. Now if we wanted to edit this, if I did it wrong, I can just grab this right where it is and start it moving again. And that applies to any of these. So that's the power of the Project Mix I.O. Unlike every other control surface that's made for Pro Tools <laughs> in this price range, you can see where your faders are and you can grab them and move them. So I love this interface. The last thing to do is just get this track out. This is your master fader. On here you could insert a mastering effect, a multi-band compressor or limiter or any number of things. I prefer to do that in a different program. So I'm simply going to go over here to File, Bounce to Disk. And then we're going to select a stereo interleaved file, 24-bit, and uh, just choose Bounce. All right, the file has been saved off the Mac, and now I've brought it onto this computer. Just happens to be a PC, doesn't happen, doesn't have to be. Uh, on this computer, I have installed one of my very favorite programs, and unfortunately, it's one that's no longer made, I, I think, and that's Adobe Audition. They've replaced it with Soundbooth, which I haven't had a chance to work with yet. Will soon, if they ever ship my CS4. Hello, Adobe. It's been a month. Anyway, <laughs> back in CS2, we still had Audition, and it has so many plugins, it's just amazing. I highly recommend it for this type of work. Never did like it for multi track work, but for this type of single file editing, really nice. So, by listening to it on this computer, I get to see the waveform really well, and I get to hear it on yet another set of speakers. So, we're in our third set by now. This is a Klipsch set, uh, THX certified, and um, I gotta tell you, man, for 150 bucks, I bought one of these for here at work and at home. These are super speakers. Got them from Best Buy, Klipsch, TX, THX certified 2.1. Um, 10 times less money than those Roland speakers uh, that you saw earlier, the digital studio monitors, but perform every bit as good. Um, if maybe not quite as accurate, definitely worth the price. First thing I usually do, just my preference, is to go with the multi-band compressor. This is a four-band compressor. Start off with the Pop Vocal Master. It's kind of a template. You can see the four bands we're compressing. You can adjust the frequency ranges, all the details of the compressor. And we'll just go with that now because it sounds pretty good. I applied it to this little selection just to see what it would do. Looks like we could use about 6 dB more of gain. So I'm going to highlight it all. Repeat that process except for kick that up just under 6 dB. And voila, there we go. A very nice looking uh, form there. Now I'm going to do a stereo expander, and that would be right there. You can't tell a, a thing different on YouTube, of course, but uh, I can sitting right here between these two speakers. Definitely adds a bit of professionalism. Then the final part, if necessary, would be hard limiting. I just look for kind of the point above which, you know, we could take maybe a decibel and a half. So really a very cost effective, uh, almost next to nothing approach that leads to some really awesome results. So just take the time to, uh, to play around with them a little bit. Hope this helps. And again, thanks for your comments. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you soon.